Mari here, and today I'm going to um, talk about and perform experiment with the uh, measuring melting points. We are going to learn all about melting point. What is melting point? Temperature, which in that temperature, a solid would change to liquid. Now, what the purpose of measuring melting point in organic chemistry lab is that we can determine purity of the sample. We can find out if the sample is pure, and also we can identify a sample. How do we know a sample is pure based on the behavior of its melting point? The melting range that we will determine today, and we learn how to determine that, if the range of the melting is broad, that means the sample is not pure. Now, if the sample melts at the with the sharp range of melting, then the sample is going to, uh, that's the indication that the sample is, is pure. There are some exceptions, which you would read that in the lab manual. Um, there are some exceptions that you get a mixture of the sample, but it will show, show uh, sharp melting. But that happens like 1%, 2% of the time, and we are not going to base our experiment based on the 1%. Generally, our sample with the sharp melting is pure sample, broad melting, which is like more than 5 degree between initial and final melting is going to be um, a um, impure sample. There are different steps in this experiment. The first step we are going to start with, we are going to calibrate our thermometer because not every thermometer works perfect and, and measures the exact temperature of the, um, of the machine. The uh, calibration, it's good because then you can, like if, you, if one thermometer is showing two degrees less all the time, that's kind of a systematic error, and we can make that corrections when we are recording and when we are reporting our uh, numbers or data um, of the of the uh, experiment. Now, to calibrate the thermometer, we are going to take like four of the given samples. Like we have choices. When you read the lab manual you will see that you have like eight to 10 different options to choose and we only take four of them. That's enough, like in a range of going from like 58 degree to 158 um, degree. Uh, we just want to see if thermometer, our thermometer is showing the true value or, or not. Uh, for today's experiment, I'm going to use urea, benzoin, benzoic acid and fluoronone uh, for the calibration. When we get the melting point, we will compare that to the literature value for the melting point and, and find that corrections. And the next step, we are going to do melting point of unknown. And when we measure the melting point for the unknown sample, we do like quick sample, and then we do like major sample. Uh, we are going to have two unknowns today. Uh, we are going to measure the, the melting point for the unknown one directly, and we use mixed melting technique for the uh, for unknown two. Now, you at this point, I expect that you have read the, the experiment in the lab manual. You already know about the mixed melting point, so I'm not going to elaborate on that here. Um, and uh, the pre-lab discussion video actually contains the details about what mixed melting is, and you will see me performing that experiment in, in action today. The last part of the experiment, we will talk about and perform sets of experiments showing methods of measurements of melting point, uh, showing the effect of impurity in the um, melting point, like how melting point is going to change. The machine that we are using is called Meltem. The, the Meltem has, you have, on this, uh, the surface on the plate, you have the, the switch to turn on and off button. So you turn it on and off. You are going to use the power regulator to adjust the heating rate, it goes from zero to 10. Um, so these are different parts of the melting point that you should, the apparatus, which you need to be familiar with. 
there is a thermometer holder and we have a, a thermometer right there. So this is the, the place that we keep the thermometer in. Uh, next to the thermometer holder, there is a small rectangular opening, a very small rectangular opening that we place the, the capillar tube with our um, sample in there. Now, I just want to talk about this setting of the, the voltage setting here. Uh, the voltage setting or the power regulator. Um, this diagram, it came with the and you have it in the lab manual, so you could see if you don't need to see exact numbers right here. Uh, this came with the machine. You know, it's going to show us the, the setting. Let's say if I set this, uh, if I set it at the two um, or four or five, the, the setting, uh, how at the beginning it will start heating up quickly. And then when it gets to a plateau, it would start um, heating up slowly, which is the benefit of this, you know, the, the way that the machine is working because the time that the sample is melting, we don't want to have fast melting. Optimal is like two um, degree per, per minute. So change in temperature when the sample is, is melting. So from this diagram, let's say if the sample is melting between 100 and 150, uh, we are going to set the sample uh, between four and five. That shows the plateau. And with that plateau, we know that the last part of the melting or the, that the, the process of melting, the heating of the sample is going to be slow. And that's what we want. So by setting the machine, the, the, uh, the power regulator at proper degree, we are going to manage the increase in, in temperature. Of course, if you see the change in temperature is much faster than what you expected, you can always adjust it by lowering the, the power regulator, the degree and the uh, power regulator. 